<laughs> so, uh, my friend David handed me a book and he said, um, hey, this was a fun read. Uh, the, lead, uh, the main character, she reminded me of you. And I was like, oh, aren't you sweet? And so I'm like, she's Japanese American. And, um, and okay. And then uh, she was tall. And uh, she was fearless, this main character. She, like in every chapter, she was just doing something so incredibly incredibly brave. She was like, fearless in her love life and in her career. And I was like, David, I had no idea that you thought, you know, felt that way about me. And he's like, um, read it again. She's also really chatty. <laughs> Stop talking for like the entire book. And I was like, right, but she's brave. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, in the years since he's given me that book, I've completely forgotten the plot of it. But I like to remind myself that uh, a friend once, when pressed, uh, called me fearless. Um, and I need that reminder. I need to tell myself this when I'm doing something that needs a little bit of bravery, when I'm considering a job in a new city, um, an internet dating, or when I'm letting a group of strangers talk me into jumping off of a bridge in Zambia. <laughs> and uh, when I was living in LA, I sort of lost my purpose, and I needed something to make my life feel meaningful, and I was casting about for options, and the Peace Corps was asking for a little bit too much of a commitment. You know, I wanted, I wanted a meaningful life without selling all my stuff. And so I was thinking, you know, three to six months of meeting would be perfect. So I, I was like, tossed around the idea of volunteering with um, Doctors Without Borders. And so David, you know, considered my qualifications as a, as a TV marketing professional and, um, and suggested that maybe fake Doctors Without Borders was hiring. And uh, I ended up hooking up with Habitat for Humanity because they'll take anybody. And, uh, and I built houses here, I built houses abroad, I sent my friend David home bags of exotic coffees from many lands, completely forgetting that he couldn't drink it because it uh, interfered with his meds. And if I was my friend, I would know this, but it is the thought that counts. <laughs> and uh, so after a successful build in Botswana a few summers ago, the crew and I decided to unwind with a day of jumping off of a bridge as one does. Except, I was so not going to do that. Um, I went along with it, and I'm like, yeah, bungee jumping! I'm not going to do it. And, you know, the, the night before our jump, as a group, we went out into the middle of the span of the Victoria Bridge, which is 400 feet above the Zambezi River, and we were going to watch, you know, the last lemmings of the day do their thing, you know, in order to psych ourselves out. And I was like, I really don't think we should watch this. And so the last one of the last jumpers, was this older uh, German fellow who um, who was ready to go, except he was so not ready to go, and he's all tied up, and he's like, I don't think this is a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and his teenage kids are on the edge, and they're going, yeah, yeah, and you know, and then the guy, the jump master, is going, five, four, three, two, bungee, and the guy possibly was pushed because he did not do that. Um, Graceful swan dive. <laughs> he looked like a like a like a Soviet test pilot, <laughs> and, and we could hear him on the descent. He sounded like a goat because he was like he was like. watching in this horrified silence and then the silence was broken by our team that was like awesome we're in and like they I'm carried along on this wave of people I think the plaster we were using had something in it because they were like high on danger and so we <laughs> run to the office at the edge of the bridge because we want to be the first we but they want to be the first people to jump before our flight the next morning so we had a very very small window of opportunity to die yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, yes, this is a great idea. No, I'm not doing it. I'm telling myself, I'm like, there's no way I'm doing this. And I'm saying to myself, yeah, I'm not going to do this as I pay my $120. And uh, the next morning, I'm like, not going to happen as I weigh in. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I am really not going through this as I sign the stack of release forms. And um, the guy with the pen is like, well, now there's no turning back. And I'm like, you know, not comforting. <laughs> the whole idea behind bungee jumping is that you come back. 
<laughs> There's supposed to be a back. And um, so then, you know, we're, we're, we're marching out to the bridge. And this span is uh, it's 400 feet above the river. You fall just tens of stories before the elastic even takes hold. And it's the second highest uh, jump in the world. And I was the second craziest person that I knew for even getting out to the middle of the span. The first craziest person was, of course, my friend David. But only because uh, he, he owned it. He claimed it. He just said he loved to say that uh, L.A. brings the crazy out in everybody. And he said that after he got dumped by a woman who didn't think he cared enough about the movie The Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, while we were roommates together near the La Brea Tar Pits, which again, I think, I think, I, think um, I my own crazy sort of came out, because it was during that window that I, I broke three bones, not on purpose, but <laughs> out of jealousy. Um, and when that didn't work, I lost 15 pounds and dated a gay alcoholic, because that'll show him. <laughs> and, uh, David loved these stories. He loved hearing these stories at the breakfast table because, you know, he was the second craziest person at the breakfast table, you know, with his omelet just completely, you know, bedecked with uh, half a dozen anxiety meds. And, um, so, many thousands of miles away, and several years later, I am marching out to the middle of the span uh, with this group of folks, and um, we are, you know, I, I, I was thinking, listen, I'm not going to do this, so what I'm going to do is volunteer to go seven. <laughs> <laughs> because, no, no, you're going to see how brilliant this is. <laughs> we only had an hour before all the bus left to the airport, and we were only six people were guaranteed to go. Seven may or may not, possibly won't, have the opportunity to plummet towards crocodile-infested water <laughs> at 32 feet per second squared. <laughs> Snap, darn! Uh, and uh, so they're like, oh my gosh, you would volunteer to go seventh? You would possibly miss this? That is so generous. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they wrote, uh, um, they weighed us in, put our weight in uh, magic marker on our arms, but luckily it was in kilograms, so nobody, you know, went, oh. uh, <laughs> And then they put our number, you know, in a, I had a giant seven, and I'm like, this is a binding contract in Zambia, I will have you for it as an ink. And um, so we, we march out, and, I'm, and everybody's starting to get really spiritual, you know, as we get up the span, they're like, man, we're just, we're gonna... We're gonna look into like the face of death and feel really alive, <laughs> you know. And we're just gonna like let loose of like the, the binds of gravity or whatever. And I was like, no, what you're gonna get is a nice Facebook picture <laughs> <laughs> and a super big headache because you're gonna be hanging upside down for a really long time. And they're like, you know, you're awfully edgy for somebody who's going seven. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we get out there and um and the kid with the clipboard. He's got a whole different agenda than the guy with the marker. And when we get all assembled, he's like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to mix it up. <laughs> because what you love to hear the teenager in charge of the high risk of the developing country announce is that things are going to get mixed up. <laughs> so he consults his clipboard, and he's like, number one will not be going first. And number one is already like, <laughs> he's all pumped up, he's popping his drama mean, you know, his camera's ready, and he's like, this, and he's like, seven goes first. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> we have contracts. <laughs> and then he's like, um, seven goes first, or not at all. And the whole crowd's like, mm. <laughs> And then everybody starts going, go. Go, do it. Go, go, do it. Because really, never in history has anything bad happened when instigated by a crowd. Go, 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 do it. So uh, they put me in my harness and just fight with the guy with the clipper. I can still turn back, you know. So they, uh, I climb over the railing, and I can still turn back. They tie my legs together. I can still turn back just a little more awkwardly. Um, and then uh, I start edging over the edge. And, and you know, on, uh, on the way out, 
I had been thinking a lot about my, uh, my friend David, mostly because I was thinking kind of funny, hilarious, snotty things, and also I was like, oh, I wish I had Xanax. <laughs> and so, um, thinking about him, I'm thinking about gravity, I'm thinking about just how crazy this is, because I'm starting to realize that there's brave and there's crazy, and what I'm about to do is not brave. And I can still turn back. And so as I edge to the end, to the edge, and I see the river below me, very far away, for I do not have my glasses on, and it's all a blur, um, and the jump master starts giving five, four, three, two. And as my feet leave the edge of the bridge, and the river starts rushing towards me at 32 feet per second square. I wait for the fear to be replaced by freedom. <laughs> uh, not long after he gave me that book, my friend David took his own leap. When the voice told him to go, go, do it. And when he climbed over the railing, and when he let go of the ship and disappeared into the Atlantic and never surfaced. And my biggest fear now is that, uh, well, I just hope that when his feet left the deck, he felt that freedom that he so desperately wanted. And what I really fear is that his feet left the deck and he felt like this was the craziest thing he could have done and there's no turn. Is everyone okay? Do we all have our buddy? Check in with your buddy, whoever it is. Just take a breath, and we're still okay. This is what I'm talking about. We get the whole cabin of catharsis, okay? We're, we're okay. I'm letting you know we're okay.